So in terms of using the t-table, this one works backwards from the way that we used the z-table in two different areas. The first way that this one is almost the opposite or backwards version of the z-table is the t-table provides the area to the right of a t-score, right? The z-table gave us area to the left. This one's giving us area to the right. Um, so when we get a t-score, it's still measuring standard deviations away from the mean, but when we find area, we're looking to the right. Um, also, the second way that this table's kind of backwards is the actual t-score, the standard deviations away from the mean. This time is listed in the middle of the table. On the z, it was on the two edges. But then that's the other twist, is the area, instead of being in the middle like the z-table, it's only on the top. So it's not even on both edges. Um, and when that area is listed on the top, it specifically can be listed as area in one tail or two tails. So like if we just had area below a certain score, then we just have area in the left tail, which is one tail. But confidence intervals are always a centered 90%, 95%. So that means you have a tail on each side. So confidence intervals are always, always, always two tails. And we mentioned that area is only on the top because it turns out that degrees of freedom are listed on the left edge. And remember, we use n minus 1 for degrees of freedom. So now let's do a couple examples of actually finding critical values for confidence intervals using the t-table. I just took a little snippet of the t-table here. So notice, you know, up top there's actually two rows, the one that's area for two tails and the one that's area for one tail, but we already mentioned that confidence intervals are always two tail. Um, I just took a couple of the columns, there's a lot more columns than that, and again, same thing, DF stands for degrees of freedom. I only took a couple of the rows on the left. So for my first problem, I'm trying to find t alpha over 2. Remember, that's another word for confidence interval, or I'm sorry, symbol for confidence interval, for a 90% confidence interval when n is 7. 90% confidence, alpha is 10% or 0 0.10, 2 tail at the top. So that means I'm going to be looking over here. And n equals 7. So degrees of freedom is n minus 1. DF for degrees of freedom. 7 minus 1 is 6. I know you can do that in your head. And so I'm going to go to row 6, which is over here. And so I look to see where these two areas cross, which you guys can already see, is 1.943. And so that's my answer, 1.943. And notice about the answer, my CV is always positive. CV for critical value. Critical values are always listed as a positive. Okay, a second example. Let's find T alpha over two, a critical value for a 98% confidence interval when N is 23. So going through those same steps, 98% means alpha is 2% or 0.02. Normally I'd have to cut that in half but I can just go to two tail at the top. N is 23, so I wanna to go to row 22. And if you look on your table at point 0.02, two tail on the top, row 22, hopefully you're seeing 2.508, again, leaving it positive. And for my last example, a 99% confidence interval when N is 58. Why don't you pause and try that one on your own? Okay, so you should have found that alpha was 1% or 0.01, two tail on the top. Then you wanted to go to row 57, right? We did n minus one, but I'm sure it caught, you off, caught your eye. There is no row 57, 
So then we're going to go to row 60. And why did we choose 60? Because it's the closest. Between 57, my choices were 50 and 60, but 60 was closer. If you were looking for row 55 and it's a dead tie, then I don't know, maybe you could use both row 50 and 60 and average those two answers. But once I'm in that location, I found 2.660.